Good afternoon, viewers. So you join me here on this cold, well, yeah, I'd say winter is here morning. Today's jobs, if I get around to it, the uh, Astra, well, I've got some antifreeze for that one because it's gonna need it. I think it's literally just water in there at the moment or, or very weak antifreeze. And the main item for today, we'll be changing the ball joints on the Passat because, well, they're knocking like hell and in a minute it's gonna start wearing the tires out. So, uh, yeah, let's crack on. It'll grow up to a good height so we can work on it. So let's see if I can actually do this at scatting the tripod over. Oh, man, I hate these things here. And yeah, I know you can get a proper tool for taking them out, but I don't have it on me now. Watch out for noise. Ah. You're wearing headphones. Ah. Balance weight off. Nice. Right. I would recommend lagging the bolts that go into the wishbone with a good amount of penetrating fluid, or in this case, plus gas, bolt release. Don't worry, I didn't get it on the brake disc then. It's just gone on the backing plate. But yeah, I've already done the bolt at the top in there, look. Right, it's time now to split the ball joint. I've got these three bolts at the bottom. They're there. Yeah, you don't really use those. So throw those in the scrap pile because uh, the new ball joint will come with new bolts and a new nut to go on top. Our new, oh, well, new nuts all around, they're not bolts. You got what I mean. So yeah, ball joint splitter in here. It's not an ideal tool, this. If you want to reuse the ball joint, I wouldn't recommend using one of these because they will split the dust cover. But these ball joints going in the scrap piles doesn't really matter. So there you go. There is the ball joint out. Uh, it was a bit more of a fight than I expected because this, uh, the forks were too close together. So I had to grind a little bit out of the end there. And that was just enough. And I managed to hammer it in and split the joint. So as you can see, no more ball joint. I'll go and get the fresh one out of the bag in a sec. But yeah, that was a bit of a fight, a bit more than I expected, but it's done. So as you can see, new joints in. I just supported the wishbone with a block of wood to make it a bit easier on a smaller jack. If you look in there, top bolt, that's all done up nice and new. These bolts here still need to be tightened because I just soft fitted those um, while I got the top bolt in and everything. But I put the ball joint on and then on the wishbone and then pushed it up into the hub using the jack. And that seems to be a lot easier way of doing it. Um, rather than trying to line up those three those three bolts there on the wishbone with all of this, with the weight of all of this pushing on it. But yeah, that's that job done. Hopefully, uh, next time I would imagine these drop links are, will need changing. Uh, probably gonna have to get the angle grinder out and cut those off. I would imagine I don't normally even bother trying to undo those. So I know how much they like to seize on. But uh, yeah, that's that done. It's actually fairly easy. So let's crack on. I'll get the next one done and then we'll make a start on the Astra's coolant. Just a little side note, it's probably worth mentioning that if you ever do a job like this and you're um, pulling the uh, the hub around, it's probably a good idea to check your brake discs afterwards in case you've got grease on them, like in my case here. So yeah, you just want to give that a quick dose in with brake cleaner. Just wipe off that grease just to make sure because you don't want to uh, contaminate your brakes. I know it's not on the back, but also check your backing plate. Make sure you haven't bent that, so it's rubbing on the disc. Make sure it's all free all the way around. And at the car, actually, because it's jacked up, and I've been hitting that ball joint splitter so hard, the car's put itself in gear. <laughs> there we go, there's ball joint number two. And as I said, one of the downsides to using that splitter tool is uh, these rubber boots will be destroyed. Um, but like I said, 
these are going in the scrap pile, so it doesn't really matter. Get rid of those. And uh, yeah, ready to fit the new one on this side now. Look at this space I've got. CRV's now gone. You just see the Astra peeking around the corner there, look. But yeah, let's crack on. So the next job for today will be um, flushing the coolant out of the Astra. Just looking for somewhere where I can drain the coolant. Doesn't look like there's actually a bottom hose on this. There's a radiator hose there in the top. That's well, obviously the top hose, but hmm, cross members looking a bit crusty down there. We'll get around to sorting that out at some point. But yeah, that's the uh, only other hose is about halfway down there. So hopefully there's a drain plug on the radiator or something. That way we can drain out the, uh, the coolant. So, so far, all I did, drop the coolant out into the catch can down there, just from the center pipe here. Flushed it through with fresh water, drained all that out, and uh, added the, uh, put the pipe, that top, that middle pipe back on, added the um, flush, uh, topped it all the way up with water. Now it's just a case to let the engine run up to, up to temperature and see what happens. Right, to make sure that this uh, coolant flush circulates properly around the car, I think we'll take the Astro for a little spin up the road, just to make sure. I can't see there being any issues with that. It's all right, I'm on my driveway still. I'm not actually on the road recording. See the 205 over there looking sorry for itself. I don't blame it, it needs some attention. Oh, the brakes are a bit rough. Just keeping an eye on the temperature gauge while I do this. Anyway, I'll, uh, I can't really record while I'm driving at the moment. I don't have a uh, phone mount. So I will, I'll let you know once I've been for a drive. So just got back from the little drive around the block. Now there is definitely a problem with that thermostat. So voxels, in my experience, usually um, the temperature does sit around how, yeah, about uh, between 90 and 100, usually. Um, there's definitely, the thermostat's definitely getting stuck open because it drops right down into the blue when, especially when going down hills and things like that. So that's gonna have to be sorted soon, but that's not a problem. As long as there's antifreeze in here, so that over the winter, I don't end up with a frozen, yeah, I don't want the coolant freezing and destroying the engine, basically. And winter is just around the corner. I mean, that's obviously not accurate because it's actually about six degrees out there. It's cold today. But yeah, definitely get this sorted before anything bad happens. So I need to let this cool down. And uh, then I'll, well, while, I, while this cools down, I'll take the, the Passat for a spin and see if See how things are with that after doing the ball joints. I haven't actually test drove that since I did those. Right, so that's that sorted. The test drive revealed that those ball joints were the issue that were causing the knocking sound, so changing those has made a good difference. Feels a hell of a lot better to drive now, actually, as well, funnily enough. So now it's just a case of seeing whether or not the Astra has cooled down enough to drop the coolant out of, hopefully. It has. Sorry, I'm still getting used to this whole filming thing, malarkey. It's quite difficult on a phone with not a particularly wide angle lens. <laughs> so I've put this funnel on the top radiator hose, which I've spun around. Been pouring fresh water in from just out of a, a yeah, bottle like that. Filling it right up, flushing it through as fast as I can, getting as much volume through there. It's coming out the other side there into the catch can below the car, which was a weird color. The coolant was blue at first, but now it's gone like a reddish color since I put that flush through. And it's cleaned the coolant reservoir quite well as, as well. It's still a bit of like sludge in there, but it does look a lot better. 
Seems like fairly decent stuff that. Uh, but yeah, wrestling with these spring clips, horrible things. I know you can get a proper tool for them, but I don't have that. But yeah, just at the moment, the engine's still pretty warm, so I'm not really comfortable putting cold coolant back in. So I'll wait till the engine's cool down a fair bit more and then I'll top her back up again. Hopefully everything will be all right. Take it around the block again um, to make sure it's well, all of the flush is, is, is out of it, really. I'm quite happy that I flushed the radiator out, but I don't want to put fresh coolant in while they're still flushing the system. So there we go, that is the coolant flushed and done for now. That's that sorted. So I've literally got antifreeze in here now, which is good. I don't have to worry about crack blocks or blown out core plugs. Obviously, I haven't done the cam belt yet. The coolant is gonna have to come out again for that, but that's all right, because I'll probably just renew it again. Just to be on the safe side, make sure everything's nice and clean. And once she's mechanically all spot on, I can then start worrying about some of the rust in behind the airbox and on the front cross members see down there also just like on a sab as i commented on my last video because i noticed the steering racks up on the bulkhead and i've owned sabs before but the power steering pipes also run from the pump down across the front sub cross member and around the engine bay up to the rack which i always thought was weird but i'm pretty certain they do that to keep the power steering fluid cool but it also means that the steel pipes at the front under the run along the cross member i like to rust and burst, which happened on one of my subs. That was an absolute nightmare, that was. Cut, yeah, I had to take half the car apart to replace that. But yeah, so that's, that wraps up another video. Hopefully, this isn't too bad. This is my first video where I've shot it in multiple takes and I'll be editing these together. So hopefully, it'll be all right. I've not actually done any form of video editing in this sort of way before, so. Leave me feedback if there's anything I can improve on. I know I didn't actually get much footage of me actually doing the jobs. That's just because a lot of the time you've seen someone take a wheel off before. You know how people undo bolts and stuff like that. It's just stuff that I don't feel is worth videoing, if you know what I mean. I'll try and be as chatty as I can and share my opinions on things. But yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. Anyway, this is a whole new thing for me, this whole YouTube business. So... We'll see what happens. So if you liked it, like it. If you didn't like it, fair enough. But at least leave a comment and try and give me some pointers on how I can improve. With that, thanks for watching.